Hello, my name is Andrei and you're watching the Serbian History Games channel. Today I will be giving a presentation of my game Hellfire over Kraljevo. Now, this game is based on the uh, uprising in Serbia in the fall of 1941. Uh, this uprising was against the German occupation and it was by uh, two forces actually. Uh, the, the Serb insurgents were split into two factions. Uh, they, on one side there were the Yugoslav army, uh, popularly known as the Chetniks, and on the other side were the communist partisans. Uh, now, as you can imagine, there was quite a bit of friction between those two factions, and actually by the end of the war uh, there were kind of a bigger enemies between themselves than actually in more fighting between themselves than fighting against the Germans. But this comes at a later point. So basically, uh, when the Germans conquered Yugoslavia, uh, they split up the country. A part of Yugoslavia was in the Italian zone, a part was in the Bulgarian zone, and a part was under the Germans. Now, the Germans basically left, but they left behind four occupying divisions, which were uh, second-line units. This was a relatively modest force, but they had local collaborators. Uh, for instance, they had an allied state in Croatia. And uh, three out of those four divisions were left in the, the small section of the country called Moravian Serbia. This is where the uprising flared up in the fall of 1941. The Germans were expecting a communist uprising to help the Soviet Union, but as it turned out, it was a general, it was a national uprising where actually uh, the Yugoslav army units called the Chetniks uh, also participated and indeed uh, carried most of the frontline fighting. The Germans were quite surprised and in, in order to quash this uprising they had to send another two and a half, but this time frontline divisions, uh, to defeat the insurgents, which they were ultimately successful. Now, um, the story goes uh, is that there were a number of fights between the insurgents and the Germans. There was a fight uh, for Shabbats, there was a siege of Valjevo, there was a, a fight around Gorni Milanovac, and ultimately the main battle, uh, the largest battle, was the siege of Kraljevo. It was in October of 1941. What happened was that uh, when the Germans saw that the uprising was firing up, uh, they started withdrawing their forces from uh, towns in western Serbia such as Užice and slowly uh, getting to concentrate them in central Serbia, uh, where they decided to make their stand. Uh, if basically they allowed central Serbia also to come in, uh, fall into the control of the, of the insurgents, then basically all Serbia goes and some very important railway uh, junctures and railway hubs were going to be severed, uh, which is a no-go. Uh, so basically they decided to make a stand in the town of Kraljevo. Uh, there were around 3,000 Germans with some local, local collaborators. The fighting flared up uh, sometime around in October, I guess 9th of October would be the, the formal start of the siege. And it lasted right until the, the end of October and I think uh, 2nd or 4th of November. During that time, uh, the insurgent forces, which were anywhere in the range of uh, one and a half or two times the, the number of the Germans, uh, tried, to, to, tried several times to you know, defeat the Germans and to, to take the town of Kraljevo. Um, just, just to give you an understanding, uh, if they actually managed to capture 3,000 Germans, uh, this would be a no mean feat uh, for the British or the Soviet armies, let alone for some ragtag insurgents in Serbia. Ultimately, uh, the siege failed uh, for various reasons. Uh, the, the, there was a problem uh, in relation to the, the Chetniks and the partisans, uh, because everybody knew that a civil war was coming. Uh, Tito was behind the front lines in Užice, preparing for the civil war and slow, slowly uh, withdrawing partisan units from the front. However, uh, ultimately, if the siege was successful, that would probably mean that the civil war would be delayed and also that the Germans would suffer a very, very embarrassing defeat and, um, you, you know, you would be basically in the control of 3,000 German uh, prisoners of war, which is, is very, very respectable. 
uh, just as a comparison for the whole uprising, uh, there were around 1,000 German POVs. The only things that you need for this game are a printout of the map and a deck of cards. Now, each card color represents something, with um, clubs being the Germans, with hearts being the insurgents, while diamonds and spades represent time and chance. So, these parts of the map represent the, the game rules and the places and the spaces for placing cards. This part here represents the, the actual playing map and the spaces where the combat actually occurred. So you have the three central spaces which represent the parts of the city of Krajevo and its environs where the Germans were dug in, while the spaces around them represent the, the, the attack points from the side of the insurgents. Of course, the goal of the game is to control as many of these central points as possible. Of course, with if insurgents control the city of Kraljevo itself, then the game is over for the Germans. Now, the chance cards are placed in a specific place, while the time cards are also placed in a specific place, but you randomly take out two of them. And you will be seeing of course, these are placed upside down, and when you draw an appropriate time card, you will be consulting the time card effect, and you will be seeing which of the historical effects are going to happen when you draw that card. Prior to that, you will be placing, each player would be placing the insurgent and German cards in the appropriate spaces. The insurgents start at the surrounding Kraljevo, while Germans start inside of Kraljevo. Now, each side has a appropriate deck at the start. They don't have all of these cards. Uh, for instance, the insurgents don't actually have the king and queen at the beginning, but they can get them if the appropriate time effect is drawn. What you do is you place an appropriate number of cards upside down the cards are only disclosed if one of the, or the other players decide to attack. What is important is to have a, as much as a numer numerical advantage in the attack spaces. So each of your cards has an appropriate numerical value. Uh, for cards from 2 to 10, the, this value is obvious from, from cards uh, for the king, queen, jack, and 1. Uh, these values are 14, 13, 12, and 11. The point being is that when a combat occurs, each side turns around their cards, shows them, and each side draws an appropriate chance card, which is added to their total. So in this case, um, the insurgents would have uh, 20, while the Germans would have uh, 27. Uh, this means that the insurgents have narrowly avoided destruction because uh, the appropriate difference for destroying each card is 8. So you have to have a difference of 8 if you want to destroy the opponent. However, if the Germans were defending, each of their cards would be worth plus 2. So that means plus 4, which means that the insurgents would have to lose one card, and in which case they would lose their card of minimal value. It would go in the destroyed deck, and potentially this card can come back if the insurgents draw reinforcements. Now, the Germans being outnumbered have fewer cards, and uh, they, their card value is less than the insurgent one. Um, they, the Germans have cards from 3 to 9, and the, the king and the queen. The insurgents, on the other hand, start with cards ranging up from 2 to the jack. So, uh, they have more cards, but their top cards have a lesser value. During the game, it is possible that the insurgents might get reinforcements and that the Germans also might get reinforcements of various kinds and that, for instance, the insurgents may draw and uh, get a king and a queen. Uh, but this is the, start, the starting point of the game. So the Germans, ha uh, the Germans have 
nine cards while the insurgents have two more. What happens now is that each side deploys their cards on the, in the appropriate spaces, uh, appropriate starting spaces, which is the three outlying fields for the insurgents and the three town uh, fields for the Germans. Now, there is one very specific effect for, for the three town fields is that they have a plus in defense. So, although the Germans are outnumbered, they have bunk bunkers, they have entrenchments, so they're ready to defend and their totals are beefed up by this. And also, the Germans can counterattack, but however, given their uh, lower total, uh, that might be dangerous. So, uh, the first phase is the deployment of the units uh, or the cards. Uh, I will be uh, placing them face up so you can see, but uh, the actual players will be placing them face down so the other player can't see what they're placing where. Uh, just to note, uh, the German defenses, uh, defense bonus are different. There is a bonus of plus two per card in the city of Kraljevo and a plus two bonus in the airport province or uh, airport uh, space. However, the agricultural school only has a plus one. Uh, that is because of the reason that the agricultural school represents the, the main point of attack for Kraljevo because it's not defended by a river. Uh, both the airport and the city of Kraljevo are behind the river, so they're obviously much, much better for defense. What we can do is we can start deploying the forces and the insurgents deploy first and they deploy units, a number, uh, they deploy a total of four cards. Then the Germans deploy a, to a total of three cards. Uh, this is not necessarily th that they should be deployed according to the highest value or not. It's just you're bluffing the other player. You're just placing cards randomly. I mean, you can place a jack here and a two here. But nevertheless, for this example, we will be deploying them. And according to their more or less value. So... In the final round, the, the insurgents just deploy three cards and they will be deploying them and the Germans also deploy their three cards. So, of course, all of these are turned upside down. You can't see what the other player has, but you can see that they have four cards here and the, and the Germans three cards here. So there might be an attack coming from this side. And from this side, or perhaps from the Zhicha monastery side. So the cards are deployed. What now happens is we draw a, a time effect card and we draw a jack. This means that uh, the insurgent jack is now worth 15 because he's uh, led by one of the legends of the siege, Lieutenant Boyevich. The insurgents jump on this opportunity and they attack from the space where their jack is located and they attack on the corresponding uh, space of the Germans. What happens now is the number and the value of cards is compared and each side draws an additional card, chance card. So the insurgents draw a queen while the Germans draw a two. Bad luck. What happens now is that we calculate the bonuses with this card now specifically being valued at 15 which means this is 20, this is 29, this is 31, and this is 44. While this is 12 plus 13, which means it's 25, 25 it's 27. So 44 as compares to 27 is a 17 point difference, which is a huge defeat for the Germans, which actually need to lose two cards because for each eight point difference, the defender needs to lose one card. The defender or the attacker, depending on who won the, the fight. This is a huge uh, German defeat. Two cards are gone. And the Germans now have to decide what they will do. Given that there is only one card here, they can go ahead and withdraw from the agricultural school 
and withdraw into the city of Kraljevo because uh, the ultimate uh, stacking limit is five cards. In their second round of activation, the insurgents might decide to move into the agricultural school, uh, but this is actually a very dangerous move. Now what happens is, is one of the two situations of how the game can play out is that either the Germans start losing or the insurgents start losing. If the Germans start losing, they would be vacating one of their three outlier fields. But this means that the insurgents have to I come into this one of these fields, which means that they're open to attack from both sides. And uh, what, should it, uh, what should be noted is that the attacking card limit is six. So uh, the Germans can now counterattack from these both uh, spaces and use their best bonus sum, which in this case would be these cards, all against the four defending cards of the insurgents. So Germans would have 12 plus 14, which is 26, 32, 41, 54, while the insurgents only have 20, 29, 31. So this is a huge difference, and if the, if the chance cards are not in favor of the insurgents, they will be probably suffering losses and having to retreat from the agricultural school. So this is how the game plays out. For instance, if the insurgent attack at the beginning was unsuccessful, uh, the Germans might uh, decide to take offensive into their own hands and start attacking the insurgents deciding to, to uh, try to whittle down their number even more. So basically what, what can happen is the insurgents can take neither of these fields, they can take one, in which case the game is a draw, they can take both the agricultural school and the airport, in which case they, this is a minor victory for the insurgents, or in case they take, actually take the city of Kraljevo, they have defeated all the Germans and this is a major victory for the insurgents. On the other hand, the Germans might defeat all the insurgents and prevent them from taking any of these fields and score a victory from the, for the cells. So this game is not long, it should be lasting about 20 to 30 minutes and I hope it will be exciting. I hope you found this presentation interesting. Uh, if you want, uh, if you want the game, if you want, if you want the PDF or JPEG uh, file of the game, I can send you. Please send me an email at SerbianHistoryGames@yahoo.com. Uh, this is uh, the game is free of charge. You can always uh, give a, a PayPal donation. We are not going to refuse it. But uh, in any case, I hope you that you will find this interesting. Thank you for watching.